Hello and welcome to this series of talks about how to put an argument forward before lawyers. My name is Declan O'Dempsey, I'm a barrister at Cloisters Chambers. So where do you start? The point at which you start, or the proposition from which you argue, is known as the premise of your argument. The premise of your argument is whatever statement you start from. We're going to illustrate this by a silly example. Suppose you start from the belief that the world is flat. Your reasons then take you from your premise to a conclusion. If you believe the world is flat, you believe the world has an edge because it's flat. I suppose you're sailing towards the edge. The conclusion then is what follows from the premise and the reasons. So if you're sailing toward the edge, the conclusion is that if you keep on sailing, you'll fall over the edge. However, having a logical structure is not enough. If you start from bad premises, then the argument's going to be weak, even if it hangs together uh, logically. We know the Earth isn't flat, so although the argument about falling off the edge hangs together once you've accepted the premise that the Earth is flat, no one's likely to accept this uh, as an argument because they don't accept the premise. So take another example which involves a discriminatory uh, point of view. Suppose you believe that all foreigners are liars and you know that the witness in the case is a foreigner, you will conclude that the witness is a liar. But judges these days are very unlikely to accept the premise that foreigners are liars and therefore would not go down the road of concluding that the witness is lying simply by virtue of the fact that the witness is a foreigner. I want to say something about the use of language in arguments and this goes for verbal arguments and written arguments. Keep your language simple. Elaboration of language loses your audience and you don't want to lose the judge in front of you. The other thing that jargon can do is to exclude the audience. Now some people believe that when they're in front of a judge they have to use clever or fancy words in order to impress the judge that they know what they're talking about. But it's important to realise that elaborate structures of sentences and jargon won't actually impress a legal audience. Keep your argument as short as you can make it and concentrate on saying clearly what you mean. Don't rely on implication or the tone of words to persuade the legal audience. So instead of talking about an untrue statement that a witness has made, you say, as the disgracefully false statement that X, Y and Z happened, try just saying the untrue statement that X, Y and Z has happened. And the point is you're not trying in that latter example, you're not trying to force feeling onto the legal audience. A legal audience fears uh, feeling as misleading. When you start to force it on them, they'll become wary of you. So, in other words, don't tell the judge that the false statement that we've just been talking about should be viewed as disgraceful. The fact that it is or isn't disgraceful is almost certainly not relevant to your case. And although the fact that what the witness has said is false may be relevant to your case, and it may also be relevant that the judge may not want to trust what the witness says on other matters because of making the assertion which has turned out to be false, you won't persuade the judge that the witness is unreliable simply by insisting on your own emotional evaluation of the evidence. 
And the other thing about emotive words is that they tend to be cliched and hackneyed, so avoid them. Instead, use the evidence to support the conclusion that you want the judge to reach. So, going back to the example, you'd say something like, the witness has given false, uh, the false statement that X, Y and Z happened. The witness now says that ABC has happened. If you can't trust the witness on X, Y and Z, you shouldn't trust the witness on ABC. Now, judges will, of course, not make general findings about the credibility of a witness in general. It's very rare for them to do that. They're much more likely to concentrate on individual factual issues where they either do or do not believe the witness. Finally, avoid labelling the other side. It, it simply doesn't help and uh, judges will again mistrust it. Be consistent in your choice of words. So if something appears in one way in the premise of your argument, make sure it appears in the same way in the conclusion of your argument. So repeat the key terms of the argument. There's nothing wrong with using the same phrase repeatedly if it is necessary for clarity. So for example, you would want to reject the following formulation in favour of the one I'm about to read out. So you'd reject the treatment was justified because of appropriate and necessary reasons, and then later on in the argument the treatment had proportionate reasons for it. Now, in fact, proportionate probably does mean appropriate and necessary, but there's a risk that if you're using uh, both terms, your court may get confused between the two. So if you want to use a shorthand, make it clear that it refers to one phrase and one phrase only and that it's intended uh, to do just that. So for example, you might say the treatment was justified because the employer was pursuing a legitimate aim, achieving age balance, using appropriate means, selecting for redundancy on length of service, which were reasonably necessary. And then you'll say, well, I'm going to call those the justification reasons. Later on in your argument, in writing or in your oral argument, your verbal argument, you could say that something was done for the justification reasons. Now, the judge is going to know what you're talking about at that point. Particularly in a written argument, they can go back and look at what you said, the definition of the justification.